Okay, YouTube. Got myself a new gauge cluster for my 2001 Ford F-150. And the reason was is because the odometer decided it was going to completely quit working, period. And uh, I had a few other mishaps. Uh, <clears throat> I've been told that you cannot put this in because of the the PAT system that anti-theft but uh, we're gonna see just how true that is uh, one of the things I did was I took the lens off and the surrounding for it because uh, it's gonna be easier to pull it out well pull the old one out and put the new one in that way you don't have to unbolt the complete dashboard to uh, take the thing out so uh, we'll set this off to the side or on the floor <laughs> I forgot my toolbox is over there alright there we go that looks a lot better alright so we need we need our seven millimeter socket. I'm gonna be using my ratchet for this. And we're gonna start taking bolts out. Bolts, screws, whatever you want to call them. Now, since I've got used to uh, the editing software, I won't have to bore you all day. I'll leave some stuff in because I'm pretty funny sometimes, I guess. So I get told it with the guys at work. They were giggling. I guess they seen my PT Cruiser radio. They were giggling and laughing. So whatever it's what we do on YouTube entertain I guess uh, I got those loose but what I wanted to point out was I seen some people using screwdrivers and stuff for this uh, little plastic shroud here I guess you could call it a shroud I don't know but uh, there's a lot easier way of doing this and that is simply just getting your fingers in there and just giving it a little tug so you pop the clip same thing over here like so and what I like to do is just reach in here well, let's try it with the other hand and do this same thing on the other side like that no need for, no need to use screwdrivers that's just silly not all the time, just that particular piece. That was very, very silly. All right, now let's go ahead and finish removing these because uh, we're gonna have this out pretty snappy, I think. I'm getting better using the uh, camera. And that's the whole reason why I started really doing this. I wanted to learn something new. Filming. But, uh... Figured learn something new and help others, maybe, possibly. Why not? Alright, we got those three screws out of the way. We are going to have to use a screwdriver here at one point or another. Um, anyhow, there's that bolt there. And then there's this bolt here. On the other side, we do not need to remove this one, but that one. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. Just 
get them nice and loose. If you have nut drivers, that would work really good. Taking apart this dashboard. Me, on the other hand, the old extension using my fingers does a good job. So. And the great part about these trucks is they usually have a cup holder. <laughs> Works for holding screws. got one of those magnetic tray things but I just don't use it I just got it and don't use it <laughs> we ain't gonna waste time trying to get that perfect shot Could be a whole lot of editing going on. <laughs> All right, cut that guy out. Uh, screwdriver time. Now, I will be honest with you. I uh, wished. That I would have picked up some of those plastic pry tools because as you can see somebody's already had this apart before um, I also have but uh, I don't go against the dash what I do is I'll put my screwdriver behind this and just give it a little tug well <laughs> That wasn't supposed to happen that way, but uh, this thing was on its way out the door anyhow. This video will definitely show you uh, what not to do, that's for sure. Anyhow, you got your plugs here, uh, you got those little buttons kind of got to push them in so you can pull the plug out it's always a pain in the butt too there's that one this one's pretty easy there you go guess the weather finally got to it that's fine it had to come out anyhow I'll be replacing it. So FYI, make sure uh, you're easy. Now, the reason why we had to do that was because there's a hidden, little hidden bolt right there, right, right where nobody would even expect one to be. Also have those uh, those little snap-in clips in the back of these things too. Why Ford wasn't uh, satisfied with just putting bolts in or just using all those push-in clips is beyond me. But uh, whatever, it helps with installing. That's for sure. Another good thing to, to have handy too is those little magnets that you see in the stores. That's also nice and handy because, uh, yeah, if you ain't real 100% careful, you're going to drop some and it's going to go down in there. Okay, I believe we are ready. Uh, you have to watch, there, there's a little uh, nipple there. And that's basically a it's like a guide pin base for the uh for this dash panel to slip on. Uh 
There's also one there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's right in here. Right there. And there's that one here, as you see. And of course, there's that for this other part of the dash. But, uh, but yeah, you gotta pay attention to what you're doing, that's for sure. Is uh, and I'm just gonna give it a little tug right here. Just get yourself a somewhat of a comfortable spot. Pop it loose like that, just like so. And uh, the rest of this, you kind of let it go down with it. Gotta be careful with this over here. And of course that pin that's back there. Peg or whatever you want to call it. Just like that. Open up the door here. Give us some room. Move my leg out the way. Just slip it on out. Just like that. Weather's giving me a good go. Sinus is messing with me. So if I sound a little nasally or you hear me breathing a little bit, I apologize. <sighs> now, the fun part. Uh, I suggest, like I said earlier, is taking these little bolts out for the lens. Uh, Oh yeah, it's a T15. Luckily I have a driver, so that's a good helping hand. You might be thinking, well, why can't you just move it out? Trust me, there's no room. <laughs> there is no room. Uh, you end up having to take off the, the top part of the dash and the radio, everything, just to be able to do that right. Uh, you, can, you can try to pry it through there, but chances are what you're going to end up doing what i did is uh cracking the lens a little bit so you don't want to do that but it's fine we're replacing it so no big deal there is a way to fix that actually uh if i fill up for it i i may do that that way i have a spare lens and uh i can show you guys how to fix that It's just like these scuff marks and what it looked like somebody must have spit pop out and didn't clean it off. And the acid might have ate through the uh, plastic a little. I have no idea what it is, honestly. It's just, it's pitted. It's gross. Uh, the other one that I have, it's a little scuffed up. I'm assuming that's probably from somebody removing it from a car. And, uh... It's very annoying. That's something I'm definitely going to look into possibly making a video on how to repair that. <sighs> if you need to do that now, and you want to learn how to do it now, all you got to do is look at what people were doing with their headlight lenses. It'll be the same process. Alright, key... Do your battery before you do this it'd be a really good idea me on the other hand I think I'll be fine I had no problems with stuff like that but uh, 
I have heard of it. I've seen where bad things have happened. So probably should do it because of that uh, theft light, but I just I just doubt. I just I highly doubt that this vehicle will not start because of the gauge cluster not matching up with whatever else, which whatever. It just sounds very, very dumb, honestly. I'll move that stuff out of the way. This is going to make it a whole hell of a lot easier to get this out. Because see, now I can reach in there. I ain't got to worry about losing a screw. <laughs> of course, if I removed a whole dashboard the way I'm supposed to, I wouldn't have to worry about that at all anyway. But, I'm stubborn, bullheaded. I'm sure there's some, are, some of you out there the same way. I grabbed myself a deep well, 7 mil. Just so I can reach in there. I got a universal, but uh, I don't really care to use it a whole lot. But, uh, looks like I just may do that that's not really comfortable and I hate being uncomfortable working on cars trucks whatever Let's see if we can get that down here and there's four bolts by the way it's one there there over in the corners and there are guide pins as well so mainly it's seven millimeter all through this process so you'll know that if you didn't before you gotta pay real good attention with this one here because uh it drops in a dash you're uh gonna have a long day Any of them, really, honestly. But, uh... I'm just holding my brake. To hold the vehicle still. And, uh... I probably should have chalked the wheels. That way I could get comfortable in that situation. But, uh... After helping many and many and many of people bleeding brakes, I have... And being stuck in traffic, it doesn't bother me, so. Get that out of there. Now the easy side. Matter of fact, I don't even think I need the swivel. this up in case you're wondering yes I'm using cheap ass tools <laughs> if I was back out in the garage working yeah I would have the expensive jobs but I'm not I got out of that because of seeing all the nasty things Worked at a dealership, saw some bad stuff. Worked at other garages, seen some bad stuff. I didn't learn how to work on vehicles to uh, rob people, so. If I ever get the chance and opportunity to open up a shop, I'll do it, just because I actually do like working on stuff and helping people, but uh, it can be quite irritating. I 
but it's something I'm used to, and I, I can I can deal with it. <sighs> okay, we can actually remove this gauge cluster, but being since I have the old handy dandy guy here. We need to get underneath the dashboard and uh, unhook the cable. So, put her back up in park. Get the steering wheel up. Get the key out so we don't have the annoying noise. And uh, I guess we're gonna work down below. I'll show you how that's done. aimed a little bit good enough because I'll just move you around if I need to all right we actually will need another screwdriver and uh, there's a funny story behind that <laughs> guy I bought this off of uh, he didn't have it all the way together and had the screws and bolts all laying on the floor and I had to make the best of what I had to get it back nice and neat but uh there is actually a Phillips screw here I don't believe it belongs here but um it's what I had so that's what went in it's got the same threads as all the others just it's a Phillips or plus I heard people calling it the plus it's a Phillips screwdriver come on guys uh, let's get our fuse panel door this is different because that knucklehead actually drilled holes into this thing to put uh, light switches in why would you do that? Make it harder for you to get your fuses, right? Alright. I'm going to leave... I'm going to leave that one in for now. Because we have a lot to do underneath. I'm going to loosen it. Just so we know we'll have to take it out. But, uh... You have bolts here and there for your cables, and you're also underneath, as you can see, right there, and uh, right in there. We also got to remove this guy, and then our, uh, let's see, there's one here also. And then of course loosen that up, and this is uh, this all come right on out. So, don't mean for you guys to see my dirty floor, but uh, we need to get this to work. Do that. This ratchet's about had it. It's got to love cheap tools. They just can't handle it. <laughs> Beautiful day. Gonna be a lot of bikes out. I'm not a bike person myself, but uh, I enjoy them regardless. Okay, that one's loose there. talked about that guy throwing all them screws on the uh, Florida truck here I'm doing it 
<laughs> I just now realized it. It'll be okay though. I'm not like the other guys. Okay. That was one other thing I wanted to point out to you guys also is uh, the way that cable runs, okay? This metal bracket is gonna be coming out with this whole piece and we gotta take out these bolts here in order to do that. But uh, you wanna, as you're pulling this out, you wanna slip this out and whenever you go to reinstall it, you wanna do the same thing before you bolt everything up. This is the way it's supposed to be ran. That way your cable ain't down here all showing, possibly getting in your way because, hey, <laughs> I know I got a big foot and I know there's people out there who's got even bigger feet. You're going to catch it and you're going to be like, what the hell? So pay attention to that. Uh, I uh, made the mistake one time before doing that and I, I damn near fell out the truck. <laughs> wasn't fun wasn't fun i mean it was fun for everybody else watching that was for sure uh i wonder if i can get a better angle there. right yeah you guys can see that okay yes there's a lot of screws a lot of screws I believe I used an eight, eight millimeter. Oh yeah, eight millimeter it is. I mean, granted, I didn't need the deep well, but uh, it was easy to grab, so. <laughs> Goes in pretty good last time I worked on this. <laughs> I just half I halfly put it together so I can get the truck home. And uh I've I left it that way for a good long time. And there's this been this god awful rattle in a dashboard, and sure enough, you know, it was because I was missing screws. It was dark. I had minimum light. So did the best I could. It doesn't matter as long as I got it. As long as I was able to drive it, that's all that mattered. Now it's about perfecting it and fixing it all up. So it could be like a new truck again, which it's taking forever. Having a family and all. But, uh, whatever. I'm not in a hurry. That's what makes these trucks fun. Project trucks. You don't need to be in a hurry. Uh, you can still drive it for the most part as you're doing something like this. See, I almost forgot that little screw that's over here. There's just so many of them. It could be overwhelming. Instead of rambling on, I should just focus on what I'm doing. I will edit all this. And if somebody requests actually seeing the entire thing so they can do good laughs and make fun of me, I might put it up on. I don't mind being the butt of a joke from time to time, that's for sure. This coming down. We gotta loop that through. And it's gone. Alright. I gotta watch. I don't uh, mess up my wires there. 
I didn't know exactly where to put them at the time. This is my wires for my uh, KC lights. But uh, anyway, now that we're under here, there. guys in there. Well, let's go this way. Alright. You see that white little bracket? That's the cable. That's the cable mount right there. And uh, oh, I believe this is actually a 5.5 millimeter. I'll have to look. But uh, then you follow that cable if you can. And then you see the hook. That's where the cable just hooks to. That's it. You just slip it right off, boom, it's off. Alright, let me get some tools so I can get that out. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a five and a half millimeter. Which is probably missing. Nope, here it is. I'm actually getting some time off from work. That's fantastic. They've been running that place seven days a week. not been happy about it I mean yeah paycheck awesome you know but uh I like to do other stuff other stuff all right come on so you can actually leave that uh, bolt in its bracket I'll show you whenever I yank it out. Uh, okay. Readjust the camera. Battery life doesn't like to keep up on these cameras when you use them. Ta da it's off. But this is what I was talking about with the uh, cable, the bracket. You could just leave the bolt right in there. You just got to make sure it's unscrewed from the column itself. That's it. And this is a good way of not losing that bolt because I'd hate to try to find a replacement. Okay. So, we're loose there. It's time for us to go back up top, and yeah, we're going to have to kind of like fish it out. That cable is going to want to get caught on just about everything in there. So, uh, we're going to go back up top here in a second. I just have to move some stuff. using my phone to help me aim my camera. Uh, put the steering column down. Get you guys reacquainted with our nightmare. Not really. It's just a lot to do. Anyhow, you can start lifting this out. things that I always forget to do is uh, tilt it this way, not the other way. And like I said, you get this cable, you kind of have to fish it up. There's a wire. There's a wire right 
in here and it has a little like loop that's open you can move it out of your way and it will help but uh I don't know. Let me see what I can do. This isn't the uh, most pleasant of jobs right here. Oh, this wire is in our way. Wires, I should say. And don't do what I just did. I'm being very impatient. Mainly because I'm watching the battery life on the uh, camera fade away into the dust. And I don't want to have to come back to this. third let's see if I can fish from underneath yeah that's not happening wire out of our way. Come on, Goofy. What the? Oh, I got a little domestic dispute with the birds out here. Somebody did something bad, I guess. Birds, they're funny. All right, got that out of there. Whew, good Lord, that deserved a beer. All right, now. You got your plugs. button there. You gotta push on it and pull it out. Same thing with the other one. You gotta push on it. Pull it out. And the camera must go. <laughs> Alright. Now just flip the old Old cluster right on out. There it is. Okay, I'm going to take a break and I will be back. Okay, guys, I uh, I cut out because I uh, needed a break and also uh, I went ahead and I plugged in this. Uh, other cluster I got and uh, apparently what they are saying is true uh, it will kick off the any theft and uh, the truck won't start but I figured something out um, my main concern was the odometer wasn't working anymore and uh, <clears throat> I had seen where 
they say the solder for the uh, chip uh, may break causing a disconnect and um, I did that checked it out nothing looked cracked nothing like that it was just bad so I thought to myself how is the anti-theft know you know how does it know that I put in a different cluster is it the actual odometer is it this little guy right here right there this is the odometer it's digital um, so I'm like, let me just take it out of this cluster here and put it into my old cluster, see if I can get it to work. And, um, it did. It actually worked. So apparently, in the circuit board of the actual cluster, there's something that, uh, just causes it to know like there's it's linked up somehow uh, I'm gonna have to stop this short my battery's running dead I'll switch over to my phone and continue on all right had to switch over to the phone my little camera decided it was gonna have a conniption fit these little things must use a lot of power. All right, anyway, so I'm gonna show you what I did. That way you know. Of course, we need that, uh, we need that T15, and you gotta undo the seven screws that go to the lens. So I'm gonna do that now. This is gonna be a little bit hard for me to do considering I'm holding my phone but uh this one's for you guys so i'm gonna do my best and this is uh this is a used cluster i just simply borrowed the parts i needed for my original one and uh I, I didn't think that was going to work once I had plugged this one in and it decided to go all blinky blinky on me. But, uh, I took a gamble. I mean, I got all day. I'm off, so I've got nothing better to do. Definitely wanted to show you guys that there are other things you can do. Uh... This isn't a complete loss for me, considering that I had fixed my truck. And uh, on top of that, I have all kinds of extra parts for my dash. And every one of them has a little bit of a problem that I know how to fix. So I will eventually go shopping, go get us a few things, and then show you how to fix that stuff. As you see, there's swirl marks and there's scuff marks like I said uh, earlier <clears throat> is uh, this is simply done just like how they would do your uh, headlight lenses and I'm going to add a little extra stuff to it because I've seen where people are using clear coat in the mix that way once it's done that you ain't gonna have to worry about going back and doing it again uh that could be a little more tricky but I'll, i i could show you how to do that i ain't gonna do that right away but i will i will eventually in the future but if you watch those guys with their headlights you know when they're doing them headlights over again it's the same process so you don't have to wait on me all right we got this Got that stuff out the way here. Move to the back. And again, there's another seven screws. They're all T15s. You're going to need a T10 here in a minute. I'll show you why.
Man, is this hard to do. One-handed. <laughs> and yeah, if you're reading that, it's telling you what the mileage was and it was apparently a 99 or a 2000 expedition and I just used a part for it to put in my F-150 that's a 2001 F-150 that I'm working on so just to let you know that a lot of these parts do interchange uh, <clears throat> I did notice I did notice this particular cluster, it had a uh, gas cap light, which my truck does not have a gas cap light. And somebody apparently had taken the ABS light out of this, this cluster, so somebody had done some work on the vehicle this came out of once before. I must have got tired of looking at that light and didn't care about the ABS and took the bulb out. Uh, <clears throat> I have that issue where my ABS lights on, but uh, it's because I go off road and I tore the ABS wires, the, the speed sensor wires out of the uh, out of the hub bearings in the front. So it's just as simple as either changing the hub bearings so I have new wires or. Uh, finding myself some wires to splice back in but uh, I was told that splicing those wires since they're so thin nine chances out of ten it don't work but uh, I like proving people wrong unfortunately that didn't happen to me today <laughs> all right now we got that cover off uh, as you see this is unplugged um, that's what this little guy here is and it's it's very it's very stiff whenever you got to do this I'm gonna yeah you know what let's uh, pull it apart anyhow uh, you have to be very careful um, the front these gauges are gonna start popping loose and there is no easy way of doing this. It's just a matter of uh, having two free hands, obviously. But uh, you gotta watch, like right here, this is where your gauges actually plug in to the circuit board. And you'll see them whenever you open up yours, if you do. But uh, that's what you're trying to pry the circuit board off from and you should be able to do this by hand shouldn't need no tools it's just a matter of getting good spots like I said and having your second hand free is always a plus I'm stressing that out because this is this is quite difficult all right yeah as you see my gauge my gauge is up front fell forward uh, be careful with this little guy that's your tripometer button and uh, it just sits there, so <laughs> be careful. Anyway, back to this. Uh, we'll set this off to the side for a second. Let's get this out of the way. And I just dropped that button. Fantastic. But anyhow, this is what you need that T10 for. This is already removed. I stole it. <laughs> I stole it from this one to put in mine. So we're just going to put this old one back in. That way you know. And it's those two screws. One that went here and then one here. It's an actual T10, not the T15. 
Everything else is T15 except for these screws back in here. Like for your gauges and everything, it's T10. So I'll, I'll even show you. See? It's a T10. I'm not going to undo it because uh, I don't need it. Anyway, there's a guide pin right here. And right here. And you simply just slip that back in place. Put the screws back in, of course. Wow, is this painfully complicated doing this one-handed. I sure wish that camera wouldn't have died on me. I just don't feel like cutting loose for a while to let it charge back up. I'm ready to move on to other things like playing Dr. Mario or something. <laughs> Yeah, I was one of them crazy people that decided to pay a stupid amount of money for a Nintendo NES Classic. But, it was the kid in me, so. And I enjoy it. Alright. That's back in place. Now, whenever you go to put this back in, uh... We need to make sure that your wiring harness slips through the back side there, that hole. Uh, I need to find that uh, button. There you go. All right, well, I'm going to stop this for a second. I will be back. Okay. Back again. All right, we got our circuit board again. Um, anyhow, you got to put it back where you found it. But, those little uh, connectors for your gauges, you got to make sure they go in the right spot. And that's when you just firmly squeeze. You don't want to like squeeze the life force out of it because uh, it you'll break it. But, uh, and that's how it goes back together, just squeezing it together. Don't want to, don't want to touch any of these chips. I mean, it's not going to really hurt a whole lot, but if you have any type of static charge, you could cause some damage. So there it is. Now this little guy here, he uh, got those two little. Ears, I guess I'll, we'll call them. But you want to slide it on just like that and just kind of like wiggle a little bit and it should pop into place like so. And these wires, uh, you can just tuck them in a little bit. That way it's not in your way. And simply just put it back together. That's it. I'm sure you don't need to watch me put the rest of these screws back in. But uh, anyway, just to show you. My odometer didn't work before. And uh, my anti-theft light is blinking right now but that's the normal blink now you see that and it's on ready to fire all brand new yeah the ABS lights on but uh 
already discussed that, so. There we are, guys. That's how that's done. Later.